Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Christina Rose, Director of Strategic Alliances at Foundation Source, and I will be facilitating today's webinar. Before we get started, I want to extend my best wishes to you, your families, and your communities. It's been a difficult year, to be sure, but on behalf of found everyone at Foundation Source, I hope you have a meaningful holiday season and new year in whatever way you will be celebrating this year. For anyone not familiar with our firm, Foundation Source is the nation's largest provider of comprehensive support services for private foundations. Our services include administrative support, active compliance monitoring, tax and legal expertise, online foundation management tools, and philanthropic advisory services. Today, we will, we will take a guided tour of Foundation Source Online. This award-winning technology platform provides foundation members and their advisors complete control of their philanthropy. You are able to easily make grants, monitor the foundation's activities, and connect with other foundation members at any time from any place. We hope that today's session will help you get, get a sense of how Foundation Source Online makes running a private foundation simple while helping you stay focused on the charitable activities that matter most to you. Now, during the demo, we will refer to Foundation Source Online as FSOL for short, so just keep that in mind. Um, a few additional points to note before I introduce my um, speaker today, John Johnson. A uh, quick word about Wi-Fi and phone connections. Probably like most of you, we are working remotely. We don't anticipate any technical issues during the broadcast, but if one of us loses connection, just know we will get it quickly resolved and resume the webinar. If you experience problems, you can try exiting and then rejoining the broadcast. Also, audio may be better via phone than on your computer. It will also reduce some strain on your Wi-Fi connection. Questions can be submitted at any time via the GoToWebinar dashboard on your screen. We will be leaving some time at the end of today's presentation to address those questions. To help familiarize you with our services, including our online platform, we are offering some informational pieces. They are available in the handout section of your screen and are ready for you to download. Um, and if you were thinking about starting a private foundation before the end of the year, I wanna let you know that there is still time to do so. Our deadlines are December 23rd for any new foundation that is funding with securities or other non-cash assets, and the morning of December 31st for any new foundations that are funding with cash or not funding in 2020. Uh, I'll just say, uh, don't wait till the end of the year though. Um, do it as quickly as you can, and I know we're only about 14 days away from the end of the year. Um, now, I'd like to ask for suggestions for a public charity to search during today's demo. In the question section of the GoToWebinar dashboard, submit the name and city and state of a nonprofit organization that is important to you or your clients. We will search one of those organizations during the demo today. And now it's my pleasure to introduce today's presenter, my colleague, John Johnson, Foundation Source Senior Director of Client Services. John has been with the company since 2011 and is a key member of Client Services, where he's managed a team of private client advisors who provide daily administrative support to over 400 foundations. John has also been pivotal in managing special projects and collaborating with Foundation Source managing directors in the New York Metro, Mid-Atlantic, and North Central regions. He is a proud James Madison University alumnus from which he holds a bachelor's degree in kinesiology with a minor in business. John, it's really good to have you with us today. Oh, I think you're still muted, John. It's great to be here. <laughs> Thanks, Christy. Yeah, no, it's, uh, looking forward to uh, walking through uh, the demonstration of our website today. But before I kind of turn it over to you, um, I thought it might be great to start with um, kind of getting a sense of who our audience is today and how they might be looking to utilize our platform. So what I'd like to do is launch a poll um, and uh, if you could just submit your responses and let us know, are you interested in using Foundation Source online for an existing or a new foundation? And we'll leave that open for 15 to 20 seconds. Okay, we can go ahead and close the poll now. All right. So I'm 
happy to see that quite a few people are you know here just to learn more uh, about the platform and, and what it does so um, happy to have you here and then um, you know another 37 percent already have an existing foundation so a lot of the terminology we talk about today uh, you know will be familiar to you um, and for those who are exploring a new foundation if there um, is anything that we go through that you have questions about please feel free to submit it in the in the question uh section of the go to webinar dashboard so john with that i'm going to turn it over to you and uh have fun thanks so much christy i appreciate your introduction and it's uh it's interesting to see that the the wide range of, of folks that we have here today so uh my appreciation to all of you out there in webinar land for allowing me to uh, demonstrate the foundation source online technology with you today. Um, in my capacity as a manager and advisor here at Foundation Source, I've had the opportunity to create and onboard over four, over 100 foundations. And in doing so, each of those foundations, we of course uh, customize and bring online many of our clients to this exact same dashboard in the same type of demonstration you're going to see today. So uh, without further ado, allow me just a quick moment to switch off my webcam so that I can pull in my screen and have a maximum view. From your initial login on Foundation Source Online, each of your users will have your, their unique access to the portal and their view will be customized to reflect rights and permissions to that specific individual. Their setup will dictate what they see, access, and how they transact on the site. Before we get moving, let's see a, set a few ground rules quickly for how to use the site. The responsive design allows you to change the view depending on what device or browser you're using. Additionally, this widget in the far right corner will all, also let you pick and choose what sections you actually want to see. Finally, to truly customize your site, you can use the Upload Photo section and drag and drop here any type of photo you'd like to share. Consistently throughout the portal, you'll notice that action items are in green and links to more information will be in blue. Lastly, I want to draw your attention here to this flashing icon in the bottom left. It's important because it signals technological and service updates along with deadlines that you need to know about. All right, let's get started. So I've logged in today as Jane Smith. She's the president of the foundation who's ready to fulfill her granting distributions here at Year End. As you may know, private foundations are required to distribute 5% of the prior year's average assets by the end of their fiscal year. The distribution requ requirement widget both calculates and tracks progress towards this amount by displaying the original amount set, distributions to date, any planned granting commitments, and then finally, how much you need to complete before year end. We can see here that the foundation still has about $173,000 to distribute, and we're gonna help them do that today. I'll point out one other important, uh, important icon, which is the information button. For those of you with a curious mind, you can hover over this section to get a little bit more information. Before we help the foundation with their grants, Let's look at the asset summary. At the dashboard level, this will show a cumulative total of the holdings of the foundation. For more detail, you can click on the blue link or also access this through the asset section here on the left navigation bar. In order to prepare for the year-end grant making, the Smiths have clearly moved enough cash over to their disbursement account which allows Foundation Source to expedite the, the processing of their grants and expenses. You'll notice a second account listed, where through our read-only data feed and access to their accounts, we'll be able to track the main corpus in this broker's account. These accounts are generally reconciled on a monthly basis for tracking of tax purposes and reconciliation. In addition, your portal lists alternative assets, such as real estate, artwork, historical items, and so on. The ability to fund in or invest in alternative assets is one of the major benefits of private foundations. Heading back to the dashboard, 
I want to point out the tax center. As you may know, Foundation Source handles an annual 990 PF tax filing. Here, you'll either find the tax return sitting for, sitting for your review, or also whether or not Foundation Source has any questions in preparation of the return. Another useful piece here is the contact information for your private client advisor. As a Foundation Source client, you will have a dedicated private client advisor, like myself, who will act as your day-to-day -day go-to for foundation management. Scrolling down the dashboard, I want to point out the Grants by Report Code section, which is a graphic snapshot unique to your foundation to help organize grants in a manner of your choosing. We'll cover more on this in reports, the report section in a moment. Grant payment history will show the last five grants that the foundation has made. And then also the grant summary will help illustrate how much a user has gifted throughout the year or any monetary limits that they may have. As I pivot here to the charity section, access through the navigation bar here, I'm gonna open this back up to Christy. Christy, any of those folks out there have a, a good suggestion for us? I wanted to be kept on my toes today. Yeah, John, we actually had quite a few um, suggestions, and thank you, everyone, for submitting those. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pick a Cheyenne River Youth Project. Give me a spelling, Christy. I, I can't even unmute myself. <laughs> sure. It's at, yep, C-H-E-Y-E-N-N-E. -E. So, yep, E-N-N-E, -N -N -E, River Youth Project. Take a quick look and see what we find. It looks like we came up with a number, as you'll see over here in the results section, we came up with a number of responses for Cheyenne River Youth Project. Uh, Christy, do we have a specific city that we can use to maybe narrow this down? Um, I believe it's actually the top one uh, in South Dakota. Very good, thank you. So in order to use this search function, we're going to narrow everything down by typing in the correct city here. Foundation Source uses the IRS mastered file to guarantee point of transaction compliance. What this means for you is that you can be assured that any organization is in good standing before your grant will actually go out. This, this feature has prevented numerous clients from unknowingly committing a potential violation. I'll start here with what you may notice as a red X. This does not mean that the organization has done something wrong. It simply means that we can't guarantee that it is in good standing. When we open a charity flyout, for, each, for any of these profiles, you'll notice additional detail on the organization, as well as the possible use of a GuideStar or Charity Navigator resources. If you're unable to locate an organization or encounter this pesky red X, you can simply enter a charity research request and our team of experienced researchers will work to determine the most efficient method for grant making. Luckily, as Christy pointed out, the organization that we're looking for is right here so we can move along to granting. You can access granting either through the Make a Grant side section or directly from the charity that you found. Although this, this section will default to a single payment grant, do know that you have the ability through the site to also set up multi-payment grants and recurring grants. For today's use, we'll go through a single payment grant. The grant date will default to today. However, if you're entering grants but looking to process them at a different date, you can actually set them up with a new date so that we process them in the future. Today we're going to enter a $100,000 grant to the Cheyenne River Youth Project. After a quick confirmation that the foundation does not have the ability to control the expenditures of this organization, we can move along to some of the additional details of this grant. Allow me to take an aside and mention the ability to use an anonymous grant. Many of our clients take advantage of this as they do not want the name of the foundation or any connection back from, from the organization to their foundation. By toggling here, a grant check will go out and it simply will be from a client of foundation source. In the case of Jane, 
we're not going to send an anonymous grant. Another toggle that you can use that defaults to sending directly to the charity is the grant send to section. You can either send directly to the charity or you can actually send to yourself for delivery personally. We recognize that philanthropy can vary personal to many of us, so the actual delivery in non-pandemic times of a physical check can sometimes have a very gratifying feeling. For Jane's grant today, we know that she's already met with the organization. These funds will not be unrestricted. They'll actually have a specific purpose, which is the new building fund. By typing this in here, it'll flow through to the transmittal letter and the organization will receive the letter which specifies that these funds should be used for that specific purpose. Finally, we may want to select a report code. This will help us in the future for our reporting purposes. Once we're comfortable, we move along to this confirmation page. We'll go through and make sure that everything looks good on this grant, and if we have any additional handling instructions, as an in attention to or a specific change to the actual address, which we've seen a lot here in, the, in our COVID times, unfortunately, you can add, enter it here. One other important piece to point out is that, as we noticed earlier, this organization, this foundation does have enough funding in their disbursement account, which we're pointing out here. If all looks good, we're ready to go ahead and enter this grant. If there's a grant agreement or additional information that you'd like to, up to upload, you could do it by dragging and dropping here. Foundation Source will act as an ongoing repository for historical grant data, which you can search through in this, this section or also in reports. As you may have noticed on the dashboard, Jane had a few grants which require her approval. I'm going to navigate to the voting required section and we'll help her do that. Let's help Jane with one more approval. Whether you set up a committee of a single person, in this case only Jane, or multiple folks, grants that require approval will be found here and you'll be able to hold them until you're ready to send them out with the proper approvals in place. The last section I want to touch on here is grant certificates. On our most recent webinar, Next Generation Engagement Through Private Foundations, one of our clients shared that they provide grant certificates to their teenage family members. By providing these certificates in a specific amount with a set expiration date, these young philanthropists are given the ability to gift on the foundation's behalf without allowing them to see any assets or history on the foundation that they might not be ready to share. Another feature of private foundations is the ability to pay expenses. In our scenario today, Jane might have met with the executive director of the charity that she was making a grant to to discuss the building fund over lunch. Jane could submit that cost of the lunch as a reimbursable expense directly through the site. Foundation Source completes a compliance review on all expenses and sends a reimbursement check from the foundation's account. This process is similar to that of a grant review. The document section is a place for donors across the country to upload foundation-related material that they wish to share with their fellow board members, whether as simple as pictures, news articles, or thank you notes, or actual board meeting minutes. Foundation Source is the keeper of books and records, and therefore, we hold on to the corporate and tax documents, which may be pertinent and easy to access in this section. While it might not be top of mind at inception, experienced philanthropists often enjoy a deep dive into their assets, grants, and expenses. Over our time in working with our clients over the past 20 years, we've standardized offering of useful reports, found here in the Run Reports section. Here we simply wanted to find an all-time, let's say we wanted to simply find an all-time grant making of the foundation. We could select grant activity, toggle the proper dates, report codes, etc and find that information in PDF, Excel format. I've pulled up an example for you today to take a quick look.
If you're unable to find the data that you're looking for, you can also use our dynamic report writer or direct by contacting your private client advisor directly to talk through your exact reporting needs and they'll work with you to get that done. In the administration section, you'll be able to easily find some quick information on the members of your foundation, your tax ID number, or your corporate addresses. Also here, you'll be able to navigate the foundation's notifications for who needs to receive the exact correct information, whether it be you or one of your trusted advisors. The client portal section and the how do I section We'll answer questions specifically about Foundation Source Online and provide information that might be useful to you specifically on private foundations or in philanthropy in general. So, we've had some time here to look through the Foundation Source website, and I'm hoping that you'll find it as a fantastic resource. Uh, if Probably talked everyone's ear off at this point. Christy, I'm hoping there's a couple questions out there that maybe we could start to, to answer today. Yeah, we did have a, a few questions that came in and were submitted. Uh, the first question actually is uh, related to the dashboard. So thank you for navigating back there. And someone said they noticed this COVID-19 assistance button on the dashboard and wanted to find out a little bit more about it. Sure, of, of course. Um, so that COVID-19 button is, is very recently implemented, obviously, and it's, it's because, and I'll take a quick step back, private foundations have the ability to make grants to individuals. And Foundation Source has streamlined that process for any folks who have uh, encountered a medical uh, disaster or a economic hardship. And we've related that to everything that's gone on with COVID. Um, and our team has come together truly quickly to help provide a streamlined version of this form that we normally have folks fill out in order to be able to provide immediate assistance to anyone who might have lost a, lost a job uh, or, or had some kind of truly terrible impact from COVID. Um, you can go into the site, click through a couple quick links, and you'll be able to send out that application and send funds directly to those individuals. Great, thank you. Um, there, another question came in and is, is related to existing foundations, right? So uh, can you build out a historical record of grants uh, issued prior to implementation um, of coming onto Foundation Source Online? Sure, that, that, that's a great question. And many of our clients actually do exactly that. Um, they'll come to us after they've been around for maybe a couple years or, or decades even and they'll, we'll be able to take their historical grant data and upload it into our site. Um, we talked a little bit very briefly about reports and our report codes, and we can also implement systems so that their historical data can flow directly into our new foundation data that they're using once they start to use Foundation Source Online. So it's a perfect meld of the, the past and the present. Great, thank you. Um, this is something that comes up quite a bit at the end of the year, and that is if a foundation is set up in December and funded by the end of the year, when is the 5% distribution requirement? Um, when does that commence? Sure. Uh, another really great question because folks ha are always wondering exactly how does that work out. And because the foundation is not required to make a distribution in their initial year, um, and the funding is based on average assets over the course of a year, it actually becomes fairly de minimis within the, the second year of inception. So coming on board in December means that you'll have an extremely minimal distribution requirement for the following year. Realistically, you might be looking at real distributions in the preceding second year. Great, thank you. And I apologize, I wasn't ready because I have so many questions that have come through, I'm reading them all. Um, so, ah, here's a good one. Is there a way of submitting grant applications um, directly through the Foundation Source Online portal? Sure, for, for the purposes of today's demonstration, I, I made a point to cut that piece of it out to, to make sure that we're a little timely. Um, but if anyone would like to go through it, I'm sure that Christy, myself, or anyone from our team would be happy to walk you through it. 
But yes, to answer the question, Foundation Source will provide any any user that wants to use our grants management software to be able to have any sort of applications come inbound so that they're reviewable by their entire foundation board. Similar committee structures can be set up, um, approval processes, and once you have the grant applications and you're ready to make a gift, uh, upon reviewing, you'll go through that exact same grant structure that we talked about a little bit earlier. Um, and that will all then be able to kind of be packaged together so that when you're looking through the full lifeline of the grant, you'll see it from the actual inception at the application stage, through the review process for the board, and then finally into the granting stage. Great, thank you. And this one I may field, it was kind of a, a follow-up question to the COVID-19 grants to individuals. Um, and now I have to find where that went. So, um, so I was talking about, uh, does foundation source kind of help facilitate the grants to individuals and making sure that they um, are qualified? And, and the short answer, because it's actually a very long answer, um, but the short answer is yes, we do. Uh, the IRS does not provide a whole lot of um, guidance on the grants to individuals program, but Foundation Source has worked with the IRS uh, over the years uh, to make sure that we have streamlined forms and applications that um, people can fill out and submit to the foundation. Uh, and if you would like more information on this, I'd say uh, I'm an, I'll provide our email and phone number. It, at the end of today's broadcast and just give us a call because there are some ins and outs and wanna make sure you get um, all the full information on that. Um, and then there, oh gosh, there are just so many questions. I know we're not gonna have time for all of them today, but there was a simple question that came through and that was, can the um, advisor, financial advisor for a private foundation and the family, um, can they have access to Foundation Source online? Of course, and that comes up a little bit to what the family wants to do. They can provide the advisor with simply read-only access, so they're able to to go in and, and maybe poke around to get an idea of, of what the their client is doing. Um, also, they can provide the, the advisor. I have several clients who actually prefer that the advisor is the one who goes in there and transacts on their behalf. So they, they have empowered that individual to be able to go in when requested and enter grants, expense payments, whatever it might be, uh, for them rather than making them go through it themselves. Yeah, that's true. And I and I would say that for uh, any wealth advisor who is uh, involved to that degree with uh, the private foundation of their clients and, and really doing foundation activities on their behalf, um, the online platform and also having a private client advisor that you can talk to at any time uh, really helps kind of uh, eliminate some of the pain points for you so you can keep the rest of your practice flowing pretty well. Um, so, I mean, we, we have so many additional questions that have come through today. I'm going to pick one last one, and that is right. um, asking excess uh, distributions for any year. How do we track that on the, man, um, on the minimum distribution uh, portion of the dashboard? Sure. So, as we continue to track throughout the year, this all feeds back into the foundation's tax return. We, of course, try our best to take care of all of this so that uh, you don't have to worry about it. But if you would like a deeper dive on it, any of our tax accountants or private client advisors can go through uh, all of these kind of numbers with you. But in a general sense, if a foundation over distributes, they will have an excess distribution. And you'll see that being tracked directly in the next year distribution requirement. So if you're over even by, $10,000 or $100,000, you'll see it reflected uh, the next time that you come into the site after the new year, new fiscal year passes. Great, thank you. Well, I believe that's all the time we have for today. I know there are at least 15, um, if not 20 questions we didn't get through today, so we will follow up with you directly. Um, and then uh, if I could ask for the uh, last slide. Oh, it's already there, thank you. Um, and uh, so here is our contact information. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, just a quick reminder of our deadlines again for year-end new, pri uh, new private foundations. So December 23rd, if you're funding with uh, securities or other non-cash assets, and the morning of December 31st, 
uh, 31st for new foundations funding with cash or not funding in 2020. Um, and we extend our sincere appreciation to all of you um, looking for ways to assist others during this challenging time. We thank you for joining us today. John, thank you for giving us your time. And sure. uh, this concludes today's presentation. Have a wonderful afternoon, everyone. Thanks, everyone.